Hello everyone, this is Young. Are you planning a trip to Seoul? Are you looking for an itinerary for Seoul trip? Many people have asked me about an itinerary for Seoul travel. So I prepared one which is 5-day itinerary for Seoul. I know some of you might have shorter or longer stays, but I figure 5 days is an average. So I have created 5-day plan. You can add more or take some out from this itinerary that suits your need. Let's get right into it. There is so much to do in Seoul. The itinerary can vary depending on your personal travel style and what you want to see. The schedule I have prepared this time is a mixture of touristic attractions and local experiences. It's a plan where you can enjoy Korean history and landmarks while immersing yourself in a local life. Oh, and Seoul has different places to visit depending on the season. So travel itineraries can vary slightly according to the season. This time, as spring is approaching, I'll introduce you to a Seoul spring 5-day travel itinerary. Get ready to take some screenshots. Day 1 On the first day, let's explore the main palace of Seoul, Gyeongbokgung Palace, and its surrounding attractions. Basically, the route is to tour this area of Seoul and you can follow the itinerary in order. Be sure to visit the main attractions and if you have extra time and energy, consider the optional locations. First, start at Gwangamun Square and head up to explore Gyeongbokgung Palace. Uh, taking a leisurely stroll here will take about 2 hours. If you also visit the National Folk Museum of Korea, then it will take about 3 hours in total. After exploring Gyeongbokgung Palace, head straight to Bukchon Hanuk Village. Enjoy a meal and coffee while looking at a traditional Hanuk houses. Next is the optional Iksongdong Hanuk Street. While Bukchon Hanuk Village focuses more on residential purposes, uh, Iksongdong Hanuk Street has more to offer in terms of restaurants, cafes, and shops. Moving on, visit Jongmyo Shrine, the loyal ancestral shrine of Joseon Dynasty kings and queens. Uh, it takes about 1 to 2 hours to explore. Afterward, head to Gwangjang Market, Seoul's representative traditional market, where you can enjoy Korean market foods, look around, and have dinner here. If you still have energy after dinner, I recommend checking out the night admission at Changgyeonggung Palace. It's the only palace that opens at night, providing a unique experience. It may take around one and a half hours. The second day is all about Gangnam. Unless you're staying in Gangnam, I recommend not to allocate more than a day for Gangnam in a five-day itinerary due to its distance from other attractions. Let's start with an optional attraction. If you're an early riser, consider visiting Olympic Park while you're in Jamsil. Then move to Sokchon Lake, Lotte Tower, and the outer area of Magic Castle in Jamsil. Next, visit Koex and Bongunsa Temple. Koex doesn't have much to offer besides the Starfield Library, but there are plenty of restaurants here. Have lunch, explore the library, and then visit Bongunsa Temple located next to Koex. Following that, there's the Cherry Blossom option at Yangjechen Stream. If you're visiting during cherry blossom season, take the time to enjoy the cherry blossoms at Yangjechan, which is still one of the famous places to see cherry blossoms. If it's not cherry blossom season, you might want to skip here because the route is little off. Next is another option, the real Gangnam. On the map, this whole area is Gangnam, but a famous Gangnam that people talk about is around Gangnam Station. This area is more for shopping, dining, or drinking rather than attractions for tourists. But if you want to say you have been to Gangnam, then take a stroll along the street to enjoy the local vibe. Following that, you have the option of going to either express bus terminal, known as Gota, or Goru, or Shinsa. Gota has the Goru Mall and numerous shopping stores, restaurants, and more gathered indoor. If you plan to dine and shop, go here. Shinza, on the other hand, has brand shopping, trendy restaurants, and wine cafes lined up in the streets. It's a trendy and stylish area, so if you're into trend, give it a visit. You can visit both, but since the directions are different, I'd rather choose one. By the way, 
A boy traveling during rush hours in Gangnam, which is 5:30 to 7 p.m., public transportation is extremely crowded. If you must travel during rush hours, do so with caution, but try to adjust your schedule to avoid it. Also, it takes more time to move around during rush hours. Day three. The third day begins at Seoul Plaza, which is located just across Dokseung Palace. Take a short time visiting Seoul Plaza and then proceed to Dokseung Palace, which is the, one of the five grand palaces in Seoul. Although Dokseung Palace is relatively small and can be seen quickly, if you decide to visit the special exhibition inside, then it will take around two to three hours to look around. Afterward, stroll along the stone wall pass surrounding Dokseung Palace. This picturesque pass is a popular spot. Uh, you can continue until here or just this part. Next, there's an optional place, Jongdong Observation Deck, which provides a panoramic view of Dokseung Palace. Have lunch around City Hall Station, then head toward Namsan. It's a walkable distance, so walk toward Namsan to pass. Sungnaemun Gate, a national treasure of Korea. Also, on the way to Namsan Tower, you will pass by Baekbom Square, where the fortress walls and nature blend beautifully. Continue walking for about 30 minutes, and you'll reach Namsan Tower. If you don't want to walk, you can take the cable car here. After visiting Namsan Tower, you can do an optional visit to Namsangol Hanok Village, a beautiful small Hanok village. I put it as an optional visit because to get there, you will need to take detour route, which might take around 30 minute walk to get there. However, during spring, the pass is adorned with cherry blossoms. After that, head to Myeongdong for dinner and shopping. I prefer visiting Myeongdong at night because there are food stands at night, which makes Myeongdong more enjoyable. If you have some time in the evening, consider strolling along Cheonggyecheon Stream. Day 4. The fourth day is filled with local experiences that are popular during spring. Head to Yeoido. Lately, pop-up stores are a trend in Korea and the Hyundai Seoul department store is at the forefront of this trend. The basement floor is filled with various food and international brand pop-up stores. On the upper floors, you'll find a space inspired by nature within the city. Next is the cherry blossom option, Yunjungno Cherry Blossom Street. It's an incredibly famous spot during cherry blossom season. If you are visiting during the season, be sure to visit here. Next to this street is Yeoido Han River Park. In spring, many Koreans go on picnics along the Han River. And this park is particularly well known. You can rent or buy a mat at the park, purchase some takeout food from Hyundai Seoul basement floor while you are there, or buy food in the park. Then enjoy a picnic by the Han River. Bicycle rentals are also available, so you might want to give it a try. Please note that there are chiggers in the grass field in Asia, so people generally don't lie and sit down directly on the grass. So be sure to use a mat. Afterwards, head to Yongsan. There is the War Memorial of Korea in Yongsan, and the admission is free. It's a famous spot that many travelers go, and it might take about 3 hours to explore whole place. Next, go near Yongsan Station. This area is popular along locals for its great restaurants, shoppings, and cafes. So you can enjoy a meal and go shopping here like a local. Day 5. Last day is in Hongdae area. I have chosen activities that locals often enjoy. Before heading to Hongdae, let's start by visiting Hongjecheon. This place where an artificial waterfall was recently created has become a popular spot attracting many visitors. The artificial waterfalls is impressive and behind it, a small hill is covered with numerous blooming flowers, making it a great place to enjoy spring blossoms. After that, we'll move on to Mangwon Market. Here, you can enjoy some local snacks or have lunch at one of the many small restaurants in Mangwondong. After lunch, now let's proceed to Yeonnamdong, located near Hongdae. Yeonnamdong is filled with trendy restaurants and cafes. Don't miss walking along Gyeonggi Line Forest Park. When you pass Hongdae Station, there is a charming railway track. 
Next, we'll stroll along Hongdae Street. In the afternoon, there are less crowds, making it perfect time for cafe hopping or visiting street fashion stores for some shopping. Moving on to Hapjeong, which is known as local gathering place with plenty of delicious restaurants and cafes, I recommend having dinner here. After that, for those visiting during cherry blossom season, there is a cherry blossom option. In the Mangwon area, there is a small adorn with cherry blossoms. It's beautiful during the day, but the evening lighting adds an extra charm, making it more enchanting at night. Following that, another optional visit you can do is walk on Hongdae Street in the evening. Although you walk through Hongdae Street in the afternoon, the atmosphere changes in the evening. Many people come out for busking, street food stall emerges, and the place becomes livelier. If you have the energy, consider walking all the way to Hongdae Station. Okay, uh, today I have shared a 5-day itinerary for a spring trip in Seoul that focuses on the balance between travel and local experiences. You don't have to follow it exactly, but I hope this itinerary helps you plan your own trip. Oh, and in today's video, I couldn't go into detailed explanation about the places because the video might get too long. However, you can find related videos on my channel where I've already introduced many of these places in more detail. I'll leave a link to blog post that lists all the location in the description section. That's it for today's video. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and leave us a comment to support us. Feel free to share your recommended places in Seoul or any questions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more beautiful Korea travel videos. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.